idea how it works. That's also a possibility. Um, so, but I said, I'm already doing it on Facebook, and Facebook is one of the best mediums. Why? Because it immediately, you know, can be shared to thousands of people, you know, and share it on my timeline to thousands of people as soon as the video is done, right? All of your friends can see that on their timeline. Zoom is a little um, private. Yeah. Like they have to share the link. You have, mm -hmm. to, you have to have a password to get in your room. <coughs> yeah. It's kind of like more like a like a conference room virtually mm -hmm. that only by invitation you can come in. Right. Family gathering. Yeah. Family gathering. Yeah. And so like, you know, this is small how it is now, what I'm doing. Not many devotees have known about it for this time because at least for what, a couple of months, Hansagati was just doing it from his Facebook page. And he doesn't have that many, you know, Facebook friends who would see it. But in, on mine, there's a few thousand, mm -hmm. you know. And if I post that on my line after the, after the class, then I put share. And then it gets shared with all of them. Oh, you know. And the other thing, which is really good, is that it's, all, it's always there. Mm -hmm. it, you have a copy of it. And anybody can go back and they can look at previous. Yeah. On Zoom, it disappears. What? On Zoom, it, it's... It disappears, it's right. Yeah. It's not saved. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Book was listening to some of your classes after the fact. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So it's that, that's the thing about it, you know? So to ask me to go to something so inferior... See, Vikanis Bi Maharaj was using that last year when he was here in the morning class. Because he's got a select group of people in Bangalore. And they don't necessarily need to see the video, they just want to hear the audio. And so I can understand for something like that. I think it, let, it takes a lot less um, gigabytes and all of that, you know, because it's just the audio, that program. So, but at any rate, we have what we have. And we will go with that for now. Huh? Very happy to have it. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. <coughs> Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Jutaha Patakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Mischa <coughs> Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahadana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savarhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahadana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Mischa <coughs> Oma Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam Langa Yate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurun Dinataranam <coughs> Gancha Kalpatarupyascha Kripa Sindhubya Eva Chapatitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Nama <coughs> Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayati Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Trishe Nama He Krishna Karana Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priyai Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Cha <coughs> Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs>
first of all, I'm offering my unlimited dandava pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pradishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Asto Tarasata Sri Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, and I'm offering my same unlimited dandavat pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs, Nitilila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Astotara Sata Sri Srila Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, and Nitilila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Astotara Sata Sri Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaj. I dandavat pranams to the lotus feet of Sri Srila Rupa Goswami, the author of Sri Upadesha Amritam, and to uh, Nitilila Pravishtom Vishnupad, Sri Srila Satchidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur, whose commentary <coughs> on verses 2 and 3 of Sri Upadesha Amrita we are studying, his commentary, which is very elaborate and very in-depth. So, we were reading uh, about, still, we're studying Utsaha. And Utsaha means enthusiasm. But not such a simple term because so many things we've learned so far that without utsaha, there is no question of Krishna bhajan. Right? Yeah. yeah. Without that, it's like the fuel. Right? <clears throat> and we were reading about the offense uh, of inattentiveness. And that's also a major obstacle. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to review that a little bit here. Uh, the offense of inattentiveness, and we know that that's also one of the Nam Aparad. Actually, it's not one of the ten Nam Aparads. But remember when we always would say it's the also ten, an offense to be inattentive. At the end, we would say that. <laughs> so Hari Bhakti Vilas considers Pramad to be a type of Nam Aparad. <clears throat> inattentiveness, Pramad. In the same scripture, the, the word pramad is defined as inattentiveness. <clears throat> in Sri Harinam Chintamani, this uh, inattentiveness has been divided into three categories. First one is indifference. Indifference. Udasinata. The second one is inertness. Jarata. And the third one is distraction, vikshepa. So this inattentiveness, it has these three different categories of inattentiveness. Becoming indifferent, uh, inertness, dullness, dullness, jarata, and distraction. We can readily see when our attempt uh, to chant and to focus and all of that, the mind gives unlimited distractions. Mm -hmm. right? We can see that. <laughs> In fact, I'm just remembering now 
Pao Shila Prabhupad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his Upadeshavali, which uh, I mean it used to be listed at the back of our songbook, all the different versions of our songbook, and I'm pretty sure that it's in this updated songbook as well. Uh, There is one Upadeshavali amongst all of his instructions where he's actually addressing this inattentiveness. So, because I'm remembering that. Okay. So here is one Upadeshavali. This is from Shishimad Bhakti. Ah, here it is. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. Okay. Let me try to find this because there's actually. How many? 24. 24. There's 24 different instructions in his Upadeshavali. Ah, and it's, I remember, it was the final one, the 24th instruction. So here it is. I'm going to read this. <clears throat> As mundane thoughts arise while taking Harinam, one should not become discouraged. A secondary consequence of taking Harinam is that these useless mundane thoughts will gradually dissipate. Therefore, one should not worry about this. By dedicating one's, bod one's mind, body, and words to serving Srinam, and continuing to chant with great persistence, Srinam Prabhu will grant one darshan of his supremely auspicious transcendental form. And by continuing to chant until one's anartas are fully eradicated by the power of Srinam, realization of his form, qualities, and pastimes will automatically arise. Oh, you like that one? I like it. <laughs> it's just a, There's multiple instructions in here. But the first instruction is we should not become discouraged. Right? That's the first instruction. As mundane thoughts arise while taking Harina, one should not become discouraged. Why? That's, and that's only a secondary consequence of taking Harinam, is that these useless mundane thoughts will gradually dissipate. But you've got to take Harinam. And then he says, therefore, now here's what we have to do. Therefore, one should not worry about this. But that doesn't mean that you just don't worry, and you don't get dedicated to the Harinam and everything else. Yeah, in the course of time it will dissipate. But he's saying here, by dedicating one's mind, body, and words to serving Srinam, and continuing to chant, how? With great persistence. What? With great what? Persistence. What is that in Spanish? Persistencia. Persistencia. There has to be that. So that's why those three different types of pramad, inattentiveness, one of them is indifference. You cannot be indifferent to chanting Harinam, to following the instructions of Guru and so on. That inattentiveness is going to arise. Uh, and also inertness, dullness, not endeavoring. And also distraction, vikshepa. So I was reminded when I thought of this about distraction, 
Because that's what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is addressing here. Is distraction. Mundane thoughts arise and so forth. But what's the cure? The cure is that by dedicating one's mind, body, and words <coughs> to serving Sri Nam, to serving Sri Nam, Krishna himself, and continuing to chant with great persistence. There has to be that. That's coming in the six qualities, right? Utsahan, Nishchayan. Dariyat, patience, perseverance, persistence, full conviction, all that has to be there. So, <clears throat> by dedicating one's mind, body, and words to serving Sri Nam and continuing to chant with great persistence, Sri Nam Prabhu will grant one darshan of his supremely auspicious transcendental form. That will happen if we chant, dedicating our mind, body, words to serving Sri Nam. Serving Sri Nam. Then Sri Nam Prabhu will grant us uh, darshan of his supremely auspicious transcendental form. And then by continuing to chant until one's anartas are fully eradicated by the power of Sri Nam, then the realization of his form, his qualities, and his pastimes will automatically arise. And this is the process, but we have to do it. And we cannot get discouraged. And yes, we have so many disqualifications. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he's telling us that you should not become discouraged. Even though mundane thoughts and so forth are arising. But then the cure is persistence, full dedication to Sri Nam, to serving Sri Nam. It will come, absolutely. But if we're lacking that, then it will take a long time. Why will it take a longer time? Because it will take as long as it takes us to make up our mind that that's what we need to do, and then we do it. That's what always takes a long time for the neophytes. It's all in the future. Huh? But what about right now? What about today? Have we fully dedicated ourselves, our body, our mind, our words, huh? with complete, absolute determination? We have to work on it, right? This is the working period of our sadhan bhajan stage. Work. <laughs> Not... <laughs> Not, not just physical work. No. You have to dedicate to serving Sri Nam. That's the work. That's what Prabhupada told us also. Work now and samadhi later. But devotees can also tend to interpret that as something that kind of lets them off the hook from chanting sometimes. Prabhupada said, work now, samadhi later. I've seen devotees give that explanation. That we just have to do our work. We just have to work. There's even persons in this vicinity on this mountaintop who I've heard from them. Just got to work. I don't have enough time to listen to Harikata and do this and that. Just got to work. Yeah. I, I heard that there was an exchange that happened in Hawaii with Chiranjee Bhagavad Gita yeah. in Gurudev. And mm -hmm. he quoted that verse from the second canto, Eta Nidhidhimana, concentrating the holy name. Yeah. It's a doubtless and fearless way of success for all. Right. Whether one is this, that. Yes. 
when Gurudev, and he asked Gurudev this, so is that it? <coughs> and Gurudev said, yes, but there's one qualification. Mm -hmm. It must be done in self assembly. Yeah. And then Sharanji said, but we can't always be with you. Mm -hmm. He said, not by proximity, but by heart. Yeah, that's true. So, well, that's where it comes in, what he's telling, by body, mind, and word, serving Sri now. That means serving Guru. Guru has given the instruction, right? So by carrying out the instruction of Guru, we're serving Guru. You know? There is proximity, there is closeness, intimacy in serving the order of Guru. Practically speaking, our Srila Prabhupada is one of the main personalities that has proven that in the modern age. <laughs> absolute dedication to the specific instruction of Guru, you see. And he did all the sadhan bhajan in his life, but that instruction to do what Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada wanted him to do was still there. And he was being reminded all through his life by the dreams where he would see Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur calling him. And he also admitted, I was horrified how I can do that. But then the time came and that was his, his absolute conviction that I have to serve my Guru Maharaj. And he even got the confirmation Two weeks before Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur left the planet, he asked, what service can I do in a letter? And he wrote back, and he said the same instruction on their first meeting. Preach in the English language this message of Mahaprabhu all over the world, and if you get money, print books. That was his instruction. Yeah, so what you're saying that Gurudev told to Chiranji Prabhu, that's a fact. Yes, we have to. He serve also Guru. said something to me. I was asking him once, what's wrong with me? Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Because I just was too much up here, not enough here. And he gave an explanation of Gurudev Kripa Bindadiya and when he came to Atma Sattva. Jai Shishi Guru Bhagavan Gandharvi Gagiradhari Radha Govinda Ji Ki Jai. Atma Sattva, he said, means make me yours. On my own, I can't chant, I can't remember, I can't do anything. So make me yours. That's what I was thinking yes. about that. Yes, it will have to come from their side. Mm. Our acceptance, right? But that's a continuing process, because if Guru accepts, Krishna has to accept, mm. and also Krishna's associates, Mahaprabhu's associates, we want acceptance. You know, we have to work hard, actually. Sometimes it's said that, Srila uh, Prabhupada, remember he used to say, Bhakti, it is simple for the simple. Right? Simple for the simple. Yeah. Difficult for the crooked. Right? But in actuality, we cannot interpret that simple means easy. Right? The process is simple. The yes. application is difficult. The application is difficult. And you cannot do it unless you surrender. If you try to keep independence, you can't do that. You can't do bhakti. Bhakti cannot be done with a mood of independence. Only mixed forms of bhakti, karma yoga, jnana yoga also, these can be done. But shuddha bhakti, which is the only way to achieve perfection, and Krishna praying, not through mixed bhakti. Nobody attains the highest perfection through mixed bhakti hmm? to satisfy their own desires. No. No one can attain that realm of Goloka Vrindavan. This is so rare. Even in so many Chatur Yugas, hundreds and hundreds of Chatur Yugas of Lord Brahma's daytime hours, you know, is not available. What Mahaprabhu is giving 
as the most merciful incarnation that's ever, ever appeared, what he's giving, what he's giving, what Mahaprabhu is giving for all these, in all the days, in all the yugas of Lord Brahma, nothing ever has been offered of this highest attainment. It's never been offered. That's why at the end of the Artik song, Gor Artik song, who's standing there watching the Artik? Shiva. Shiva. Shukadev. Goswami. Narada Muni. And many others. And what is happening to them when they witness Mahaprabhu's Gorara Sampada? Huh? They witness this extreme beauty, opulence, mercy, munificence. What happens to them? Choked up. They get choked. Their voice becomes choked. Yeah. Preme. With what? With preme. Their voice becomes completely choked with preme. Preme gada gada. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is also standing and watching. And he says, Bhakti Vinod Deke. Bhakti Vinod is witnessing Gorara Sampada, his supreme majesty, his supreme glory, his supreme opulence. So, this has never been given. But Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, they came to give this. But the qualification. That's what we have to become very aware and very conscious of. Not to uh, be jarata, like it says here, inert, inertness. No, we have to be very active with enthusiasm. So, <clears throat> one cannot perform Hari Bhajan at all. Until one is free of these three types of inattentiveness. So on one hand, we just read Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur saying we should not worry when these thoughts come and go because the secondary effect of taking shelter of Sri Nam is that in due course of time they'll automatically be removed automatically. But that automatic removal from our persistent attempt to chant Harinam and avoid the offenses and avoid inattentiveness and dedication with body, mind, words, that's not such an easy thing. But yet, it's what we have to do. Whatever time's remaining right now in this current body, whatever time, and that's not, not, there's not much of it, but whatever time is remaining, we should try to become so one-pointed in this. And however much we la we are lacking, we should not worry about that. That's what Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati told. We should not worry. But it doesn't mean that we are lazy or we don't make the earnest endeavor with great determination that has to be done so we're hearing from the sick from the third shloka of the six favorable activities bhakti vinod thakur is uh, giving such a deep commentary <clears throat> so he's telling that one cannot perform hari bhajan at all like at all means zero until one is free of these three types of inattentiveness. So what he's talking about is that stage of real Hari Bhajan. That means 24 hours. That's real Hari Bhajan. Ours is, you know, Sadhana Abbas. It's only a semblance you know, of actual Hari Bhajan. What are the three things? Distraction? Uh, inertness, and what's the third one? First one is indifference. Indifference. Udasinata. 
he gets it. He's been talking, and he will talk more about this indifference and inertness and distraction. Udasinata, Jarata, and Vikshepa. Now, although all, all other types of aparads may have been eliminated, this is the big one that we read yesterday, although all other types of aparads may have been eliminated, but a taste for Harinam will never arise. A taste for Harinam will never arise as long as inattentiveness remains present. So how, what a prominent necessity this is. Can that go on for a number of lifetimes? Right? Yes, definitely, of course. We don't know how many lifetimes we've been making some little attempt. We don't know. But it can, certainly it can. But one thing is, okay, <clears throat> this life, this life, uh, it is preparing us. Because where did we come from? The streets. Yeah, we, we came from a low position. Really in uh, an extreme fallen category. We don't know what enabled us from our previous lives to have the necessary, you know, Agyata Sukriti and Gyata Sukriti and Bhakti Unmukha Sukriti to come to the lotus feet of the pure devotee. Nor do we know why what we did to make us have such a low heart. That's right. That's right. And that could have been some offenses. So we don't know this, but we know for sure that Krishna has given us entrance into that realm of associating with the pure devotees. We know that. You know. But yet, <clears throat> this life is a preparation for the next. And I'm going to repeat what I've said a number of times that Gurudev told. He said, if you just utilize what is remaining in this life completely, like we're, what we're reading here, and what we read from Bhakti Siddha, that that's what we have to do in the remainder of this life, okay? He said, if you just do that, he said, you cannot imagine what arrangement Krishna is going to make for you in your next life. Yeah, that was a very big uh, encouragement to me, hearing Gurudev saying that, you know. And I've also heard him say a number of times about how two or three lifetimes like this. So what does it mean? What kind of arrangement will Krishna make? It means your birth, your situation, your family, how much elevated those personalities are. Mm -hmm. Like Krishna says in the Gita, Suchi Nam Sri Matam Gehe, that a fallen yogi will take birth either in the family of rich aristocracy or very advanced transcendentalists. So this kind of arrangement means very high transcendental birth and here comes the big one, the samskaras that you would need to be able to accomplish what needs to be done in that life. We're gaining the samskaras now, so many, so many in this life. We've also committed so many offenses and so forth, but we've also continued on the path and gained some impressions. We definitely have, especially in this latter period with Srila Gurudev, Raj Rasik, everything. So, and Gurudev also knew that. <laughs> I remember, <clears throat> yeah, I remember we were in Kartik one time with Gurudev. And he said something like, um, so, any of you here, you want to go to Vaikuntha? And they all said, no! Do you want to go to Goloka Vrindavan? Yes! And then I think Gurudev was even saying, do you want to become cowherd boy? No! 
So like all the devotees, Gurudev was like almost like playing a game. And he was testing the samskaras, even in neophyte devotees that had been implanted. Because Gurudev was just one point in the Srimati Rai. There was no guru. Totally, absolutely. So even though nobody's really, practically no one, <laughs> is really qualified to even begin to worship the lotus feet of Shishi Radha and Krishna in that mood. But Gurudev implanted all these impressions. And he said, you cannot see. You cannot see what is taking place, but we can see. We can see. So this is our great hope that we hold on to. But we also have to continue on with great dedication, increasing it. Mm. Increasing it. That's the whole thing. Not just maintaining or not just sliding back and then crawling back and then sliding back. No. We have to become fixed. But also our samskaras are the means through which this will become possible. And that's what I'm saying. What Gurudev was telling, you cannot imagine what arrangement Krishna will make for you in your next life. Because he will provide the highest sadhu sangha, the necessary, very elevated samskaras by which we can actually serve those great Mahabhagavad pure Vaishnavas. Everything is coming. It's just around the corner. We have to avoid offenses, especially Vaishnava Parad. But Nama Parad, we have to endeavor more and more. And then we are guaranteed. Gurudev is saying, you're guaranteed. So the devotee had asked Srila Gurudev, what does it mean to get the Guru's mercy? Mm. And Gurudev said, that means in your next life you'll have an opportunity to chant 64 rounds. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And not just external kind of chanting, Nama Parad, because Gurudev said that many times. From Nama Parad, you can easily get material enjoyment. Mm. In Nama Parad, very easily you can get that. But not Krishna praying. Mm. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying about the samskaras, the impressions. Because then we can live as Rupa Goswami has told in the eighth verse and do continual, continual sukirtanami. So, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying, the taste for Harinam will never arise as long as inattentiveness remains present. Although even other types of Aparads may have been eliminated already, but if the inattentiveness is there, taste for Harinam will never arise as long as that is still present. So, if from the very beginning of Bhajan, one possesses an enthusiasm that never slackens. <clears throat> then indifference, laziness, and distraction will never arise in one's practice of Nam Bhajan. Utsaha, or enthusiasm, is therefore helpful in the performance of all types of Bhajan. So then, the next section, <clears throat> Nishta gradually arises only through the enthusiastic performance of Bhajana Kriya. So he's saying that when one's performance of Bhajana Kriya is full of enthusiasm, then one's irresolute disposition, Anishtita, is removed. We read about the steady and unsteady. So it's removed when one's performance of Bhajana Kriya is full of enthusiasm. And the stage of Nishta, Nishta is quickly achieved. So Rupa Goswami has mentioned the sequence, Ajo Shraddha, Tatak Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, and so forth. He's quoting that verse. <clears throat> this means that the eligibility 
to perform bhajan, it arises upon the awakening of faith, shraddha. That's the eligibility. Because ado shraddha. In the beginning, there is shraddha. Ado means in the beginning. So he's saying that means that the eligibility to perform bhajan. Why, would, why did we suddenly become eligible to sit two hours every morning chanting our japa in the, with all the devotees getting up from Mangalarti doing all of 24 hours a day? Doing bhajan, chanting, hearing. Why? Because Shraddha was there. And that is the eligibility to perform bhajan. And if somebody doesn't have that, they can't begin yet. So, upon the arousal of this eligibility, then what happens then? When your eligibility in the form of Shraddha to do bhajan comes, then what happens then? One obtains the association of saintly persons, sadhusanga. Doesn't matter where one is, Krishna will find you. <laughs> he, he's already there. He's going to make the arrangement for you to get sadhusanga. And then by that sadhusanga, one begins to execute the activities of bhajan, bhajana kriya. In the beginning, bhajan is not performed with nishta. Why? Because various types of unwanted desires in the heart that impede one's progress in bhakti, anartas. They continuously crush the heart. But performing bhajan with enthusiasm, it vanquishes all anartas. So not just doing bhajan, but with enthusiasm. Then, he's ending this section, he's ending this section, because the next one is nishchayat, firm resolve. But he's ending this section by saying, enthusiasm is the very life of shraddha. It's the very life of shraddha. So the word shraddha certainly means faith, but utsaha is the very life of shraddha. Faith without enthusiasm is meaningless. Many people think they have faith in the Supreme Lord, but because they do not possess enthusiasm, their faith is impotent. We read that yesterday. In impotent. For this reason, due to a lack of sadhu sangha, they are unable to perform bhajan. So all these prerequisites have to be there. That ends that section. Now we're beginning nishchaya, firm resolve. What are the six of the verse? Utsaha, nishchaya, dharyat, tatat karma, pravartanat, sangatyagat, sato vritte, shadbir bhakti prasidyati. <clears throat> now, in this section, nishchaya, the second item, means firm resolve, nishchaya. The determined and the doubtful. This is the first subtitle. The determined and the doubtful. In Sri Upadesha Amrita, Sri Rupa Goswami has instructed bhakti sadhakas to be determined. As long as a person lacks determination, he remains doubtful. Automatically, doubtfulness will be there when one is lacking determination. So can that be doubtful in yourself and also in the process? Is yeah. There a different I think it can refer to any, any aspect yeah, how many Whether aspects it's the, of the doubtfulness? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, maybe he's going to give us a few categories. <laughs> now he says, as long as a person lacks determination, he remains doubtful. A doubtful person can never attain auspiciousness. Now he's going to quote from the Bhagavad Gita. And you may remember this. 
shloka, where he's talking about uh, those who are ignorant, faithless, and who have a doubting nature are ruined, Krishna's telling us. Mm -hmm. This is from the fourth chapter, verse 40. Agyash cha shradadanas cha samshayatma vinashyati nayam lokosti naparo nasukam samshayatmanaha. Okay. The translation of this verse is <clears throat> those who are ignorant, faithless, and who have a doubting nature, they are ruined. A skeptic cannot achieve his well-being in this world or the next, Krishna is saying. Yes, he says, nayam loko sti naparo. Nayam loko means I'm in this world or naparo, or the next one. And then he says, nor can he even achieve happiness. So he can't achieve happiness. He can't achieve his well-being in this world or the next. This is a faithless, ignorant, and doubting nature. That person is ruined. Vinashyati means he's, he's ruined. Now, a doubtful person who is faithless, and devoid of knowledge of his relationship with Krishna, that's called what? The relationship with Krishna is called what? Yes. Sambandha Jnana. So a doubtful person who is faithless and is devoid of knowledge of his relationship with Krishna, Sambandha Jnana, is lost. For such a doubtful person, <clears throat> there is neither happiness nor peace in this world or the next. Uh, those who possess Shraddha, they are already free from any doubts because the very meaning of the word Shraddha is firm faith. So as long as one has doubt in one's mind, firm faith cannot arise. Hence, a faithful person is always free from any doubts. It's the nature of Shraddha. Doubts will go away. We can see, like in our, all of our stories, and all of our contemporaries, how they joined the movement, when they joined, what they went through. And we can see that for some, they had a particular conditioning that's some difficulty, more difficulty. Some had much less difficulty. They're just like, okay. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. What's that due to? The degree of Shraddha and the degree of previous life's Sukritis, Bhakti Yamaka Sukriti. But those persons remained in the course of time. They persevered, you know. And everything was overcome by the process. I'll give you one example. Nemi Maharaj, when he tells his story, Nemi Maharaj, formerly Jnana Das Prabhu, so he was science science uh, student in Oxford University, earned a bachelor's degree, so forth. But he went through a stage before he found out anything about Krishna, of being attracted to Buddhism. And uh, quite an extraordinary story. He, during the communist period, we're talking about, you know, the 70s. During the communist period of Russia, he decided that he was going to go to Japan and study Buddhism in Japan. So he took the Trans-Siberian train line which takes nine days to cross nine different time zones and going all the way across Russia. You're on the same train for nine days, you know? And he even had to come from England, go across Europe, enter Russia, well, get the train outside of Russia, but in those days they didn't allow tourism 
in Russia. He's on this train. So he goes to Japan and he learns Japanese language, living in a Buddhist monk's ashram. I think it was a, what do they call it? That type of Buddhism. The, what is it called? Zen. Hmm. You know. And so he was there for a whole year. And, you know, after that, I mean, he, he learned basic Japanese so he could communicate there. Just like he's learned Russian language. And you can see him. He posts all the time his evening class. He's giving it in Russian language. Gurdjieff ordered him because he knew that he had an ability with languages. He says, simply you should go to Russia and not go anywhere else and you should learn Russian language and preach there. So he did it. <laughs> but with me, he didn't want me to take out time to learn Russian, all of that. But still, I went to, I took some classes, but I, I don't have the same ability that he has, you know. And uh, anyway, he came back after that and took the train all the way back again. And he came to London, he was in London. I don't know how much time transpired, but not long after he returned all the way back. And he was coming up from what they call, what do they call that in, in England? The tube. The tubes. They call it the tube system, mm -hmm. the underground train system, right? And he's coming up at a tube station. And there are the devotees chanting. And he's wearing a Japanese kimono type thing. I'm a Buddhist, you know. So he meets the devotees. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't know all the details, I can't remember. But he gradually came into the association. Prabhupada, of course, was on the planet still. I think that might have been in 72 or 73, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, he then, you know, was now living in the temple and following the program and all of that. But because of his conditioning uh, from the previous impersonalist, voidist kind of thing, he found it difficult to accept the deities. That remained with him for some time. You know, it was a little bit of a struggle because so much impersonalism, you know. But in course of time, that also went away. So the thing is that everyone is coming to the Krishna consciousness from their previous lives certain conditionings and so forth. But it has been proven millions of times, billions of times in the course of the history of our universe, trillions of times probably, how the jivas come and how through following the Yuga Dharma and following, especially in Kali Yuga, Nam Sankirtan as the Yuga Dharma, Krishna consciousness movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anyone, if they have enough faith that they can be free from doubt and remain in that association, everything will come. Right? Yeah. So, he's telling here, hence a faithful person is always free from any doubts. So a little bit more. Now, the ten ontological truths. What are the ten ontological truths called? I'm reading das, this. Yes. Das Mula Tattva. Das Mula Tattva. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has ordered the entire Vaishnava community to know three tattvas, three established truths. Number one, one's relationship with Bhagavan. And what's that called? Sambandha. Number two, the means to attain one's goal. Abhideya. And number three, <clears throat> the ultimate goal of one's sadhan and bhajan, which is called what? Prayoga. Mahaprabhu has ordered everyone to learn these three. Das Mul 
the ten basic philosophical principles is comprised of these three tattvas. The first basic principle is <clears throat> that the Vedic Shastras are the only evidence, Brahman. I'm just going for just a few more minutes. To describe Prayojan Tattva, it is essential to first know the Praman. What does Praman mean? It means evidence. Proofs. Yeah. There are nine Prameyas. Prameyas means the subjects that such evidence proves. Evidence is essential in order to establish all these Prameyas also. Different kinds of evidence have been presented in different scriptures. Some scriptures, they consider direct sense perception, pratyaksha, or inference, anuman, or comparison, upaman, and so on. They, these scriptures consider these to be praman while other scriptures consider various other methods to be also included as praman. The praman presented by Sriman Mahaprabhu, which is obtained by receiving the message of the Vedas through disciplic succession, Amnaya, is that praman which is self-realized. It means, this Amnaya means that Praman which is self-realized and it is known as the principal Praman. Other types of Praman are considered secondary. Only this principal Praman is worthy of acceptance. And this is Mahaprabhu's position. This is the Praman. So, <clears throat> now this one thing is being discussed that there are, there are conceivable and also inconceivable conceptions. Some are conceivable and some are inconceivable. <clears throat> all the different kinds of conceptions, that means all the different kinds of bhavs in this world. Conceptions, he's also using the word bhavs. Mm. Moods. So, they can be divided into two types. Chintya, that means conceivable, and achintya, inconceivable. <clears throat> Worldly conceptions, or those that appear of their own accord in the thought process of a human being, they are called conceivable conceptions, chintya bhav. Transcendental conceptions that are beyond the capacity of ordinary human perception, they are called inconceivable conceptions. So the first one is worldly conceptions uh, that appear of their own accord in the thought process of a human being. They're called chintyabhav. Are there some examples of that? Maybe he may break that down. I'm sure he's going to break it down. Then transcendental conceptions is the other type. What are those? They are beyond the capacity of ordinary human perception. They are called inconceivable conceptions, achintibhav. So without attaining complete, fixed realization of the self, that's called atma samadhi, without attaining that, one cannot understand inconceivable conceptions. Therefore, in transcendental matters, there is no place for those pramans that are headed by pratyaksha, that means you know, direct sense perception. Mm. There's no place for that in the realm of transcendental matters because that's what? It's a chintya, inconceivable. It can only be uh, attained when one has complete fixed realization of the self, atma samadhi, otherwise cannot be understood. Therefore, in transcendental matters, there is no place for those pramans that are headed by pratyaksha, and that are based on logic. So he's quoting from the Mahabharata. Very famous verse. Achintya kalu ye bhava. Here's the word achintya. Achintya kalu ye bhava 
na tams tarke na yojayet. Prakritibhya param yachcha tad achintyasya lakshanam. So this is the definition verse. What is achintya? What is inconceivable? So here's the translation. <clears throat> All transcendental tattvas are beyond material nature and they are therefore inconceivable. Achintya kalu ye bhava, that which is inconceivable. So because of that, they're beyond the material nature, they're inconceivable. So dry argument is within the jurisdiction of material nature. So tarka means logic, argument, dry debating, like that. Dry argument is within the jurisdiction of material nature, so it can, it can be utilized only in relation to mundane subject matters. Okay? It cannot even come close to transcendental tattvas, not to speak of grasping them. So as far as inconceivable conceptions are concerned, the application of dry argument is undesirable and it is actually useless. So that's the translation of that verse. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying that the tattvas that are beyond the 24 material elements, those tattvas are replete with what? Inconceivable conceptions. Evidence based on direct sense perception, inference, or so on, they cannot enter such spiritual conceptions. The only way to comprehend them is by self-realization, atma samadhi. But atma samadhi is unattainable for ordinary people. Due to this unfortunate situation of the living entities, the most merciful Supreme Lord thus manifested the Vedic Shastras. And Sriman Mahaprabhu has said, Maya Mugda Jiver Nahi Krishna Smriti Gyan Jivere Kripai Koilo Krishna Veda Puran. This is from his teachings to Srila uh, Sanatana Goswami. Uh, Mahaprabhu is telling, Maya Mugda Jive, the living entities who are bewildered by Maya, they become oblivious uh, to the remembrance of Sri Krishna. Nahi Krishna Smriti Gyan. They have no Krishna Smriti, remembrance of Krishna. So therefore, Krishna has mercifully manifested what? The Vedas and the Puranas for them. So if Krishna didn't manifest the Vedas and the Puranas, would anyone in the, within the confines of this egg-shaped material universe ever be able to know these transcendental, inconceivable truths of the Supreme Reality? Never. There'll be no possibility. No one can climb up ascending process. No one can to the absolute truth because why? It's in the realm of inconceivability. So because the jivas, they're bewildered by maya and they've lost their remembrance for Krishna, so therefore Krishna has so mercifully manifested the Vedas and Puranas for them. That's us. You know? So therefore, in Mahaprabhu's line, He's telling very clearly that this Amnaya Praha Tattvam, the Amnaya, which is coming from the Vedic knowledge that has been realized by the disciple succession, that is our only evidence to prove all the other inconceivable uh, truths, the Pramaya, Pramaya Tattva. So, in this way, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is really, really um, expanding upon what it, what does it mean to have nishchaya, firm faith? How is that attained? Without any doubts, firm faith. And first one has to gain some bandha gyan. Huh? And then gradually that has to become realized. I heard Srila Srinivar say, when the heart is captured, the intelligence recedes into yes. the background. Yes, that's a fact. When the heart is captured. So now the question comes, how does that happen? <laughs> that the heart becomes captured. 
and find the intelligence. <laughs> yeah, but not only, heart not only prayer. doing bhakti. Mm -hmm. That's how the heart becomes captured, but only by bhakti. So, but there are also qualifications. As we've been reading, there are qualifications to do bhakti, to do, to do real Krishna bhajan, to do non bhajan, all these things, there are qualifications. But it is only by bhakti that all of these things will be manifested in the heart. And when the heart is captured, then the intelligence recedes into the background. That's why Lord Brahma gave that verse, which was quoted to Mahaprabhu by Ramananda Roy, Jnane prayasam udapasya namanta eva jivanti sanvukaritam bhavadiya varita stane stita shutigatam tanuvan manovir ye prayaso jitati chopya si taistri lokya. That verse is the beginning where Mahabharu said yes. This is with all the others, he said this is external. Mm -hmm. Even surrender. Sarvadharma and Parichyaja was also quoted. And this is external. So here, now Ramana Roy is telling what Lord Brahma told that Jnane Prayasam Udapasya Namanta Eva. When one can completely give up his attempt through Jnana to know the Absolute Truth, uh, Udapasya Namanta Eva, that means surrender. Uh, giving up the attempt to know that supreme reality through jnana. Uh, then jivanti san mukaritam bhavadiya varitam. San mukaritam means from the lotus mouth of the pure Vaishnavas. One should, uh, jivanti means one should live, one should spend his life. Jivanti san mukaritam bhavadiya varitam. And here, the nectar that's flowing from them. Stane stita. We know the meaning of that because Prabhupada has told that many times. In Situated his in whatever position you're in. That's right. Stane stita means remaining in that position. But there's also deeper understandings. What does it mean to remain? It means to remain where? In the association with the pure Vaishnavas. Mm -hmm. Stane stita. Whatever your external Varnashram situation is, but always remaining in the association of the pure Vaishnavas and hearing from them, Shruti Gatan Tanuvan Manobir. Here, here it is again, Tanuvan Mano. Always we keep on hearing about body, mind, and words, right? Mm -hmm. Shruti Gatan Tanuvan Manobir, that one is constantly absorbed in hearing. Then what happens? Ye praya so, by this attempt, by this effort, jitta ajitta. Huh? Jitta jitopi asi tais trilokya. He who in the trilokya, in the whole three worlds of the universe, who is called ajitta, unconquerable. The Supreme Lord is unconquerable. No one can conquer him. But he becomes jitta by this process. And when Mahabharata heard that, he said, yes. Because this is the prerequisite before entering into the actual ragmark bhakti, which now Mahaprabhu is beckoning Ramananda Roy to unfold. What is that? And he becomes more and more enthusiastic to hear that Mahaprabhu. So anyway, we'll hear more tomorrow. So much. so much nectar is coming. We cannot even estimate so many pages of nectar. I think this is one of the longest uh, sections. One of the longest. Yeah. For enthusiasm. No. We're, we're finished with the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Now comes the second one. Yeah. Which is? Nishchayad. Nishchayad. Firm conviction. Yeah. yeah, there's about, looks like about 15, 20 pages of that. And leaders. I sure do. I don't know about anybody else. Gaur Premanandi Shri Upadesham Ritam Ki Jai Jai Shri Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai Jai Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai 
Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai, Satchinandan Gaur Hari Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanandi. I, I was, I thought of something before I, before the class when I was doing my, uh, my Mangala Charana. And uh, I just want to mention this, that um, I was reminded today, <laughs> because today is really the first cold day. Mm -hmm. And where you're feeling the cold indoors as well, and so forth, right? And I, re I remembered how the first, I think it was like, let's say August, September, October, November, December. About four and a half, five months after I joined, I was sent to Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. And in the middle of January in Chicago, in our storefront, the heat was turned off. Okay, and uh, the reason why I'm remembering this is because we endured that situation in the middle of January, still going out every day for six hours in the snow, in the in the, the ice, the, the cold, you know, chanting on the streets, warming our hands inside of the vestibule of this big department store. You know, they had like radiator heaters. People would stand there also waiting for the bus and so forth, you know. And so then, and so we did that. We did that. It went on for a couple of weeks. And we took showers like maybe every two or three days at the YMCA nearby, <laughs> right? And, uh, but we didn't take showers like, because there was no hot water. It was an absolutely cold like ice, you know? Water in Chicago is colder than freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so the thing is, what reminded me was when I came in here and, you know, we're, we're wearing more layers, especially me, and wearing more layers of clothing because I'm so sensitive to the cold. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was remembering, oh, I remember when we had the Sunday feast during that time. We had this little storefront, you know. It was probably about... Yeah, it was probably the length from here to that wall. And the width of it was a little bit less wide than this. Maybe like up to the door, to the to the, ed, the other side of the doorway. That was about the size of our little storefront. And that was our, that became our temple room, right? And so uh, when we had the Sunday feast, you know what happened? The place completely filled up with all the young people especially, you know. It could have, like packed the whole temple room. And guess what? It got warmed up. <laughs> the whole room, we could take our coats off and our hats and our gloves, you know. <laughs> so I was thinking that you know, now it's starting. If the windows are open, then cold air starts to come in, you know. And, and like in the early evening, I start to close everything, right? But when I came in here, it's starting to feel warm. I thought, oh, yes, body heat yeah. of the devotees. <laughs> so that was quite an experience. And you know who joined right during that time? Navi Yogananda. He's the, the husband of, um, of uh, Manjari from Hawaii, the oh. Prabhupada disciple of Manjari. Mm -hmm. he's, he's her husband. They haven't been together for many years, but... So he joined exactly at that time when we had no heat and he stuck it out, you know. And he was friends with Atreya Rishi. Mm -hmm. And Atreya Rishi came with him to our storefront. And I think Atreya had come in touch with the movement over in New York where he was employed there, you know, big businessman he was. So then Navi Yogana stayed. But I was astonished that somebody joined when there was no heat mm. and stayed, you know. <laughs> he didn't stay long. He went to New Vrindavan very soon after that. But That was pretty austere also. He became an yeah. artist. And... He's a musician more. Oh. He, he liked to play guitar and do music and stuff. I don't think he became an artist. Yeah. Anyway, all these memories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Thank you.
It's nice for me to have oldies to speak with because it's a different bhav, you know? Yeah. And it helps to bring out so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jay, Harry, Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah.